Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome here to another episode on the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. I'm Bielis Fass, your host, and as well a fellow Cardiac Arrest survivor. In this episode, I had the pleasure to welcome Joke Gessel, who is a fellow Belgian. Uh, she actually doesn't live far from where I live. Uh, I mean, well, in Belgium, nothing is really far, but let's say in, in terms of, of Belgium size, she doesn't live very far from where I live. And, uh, you know, of course, she's also a fellow cardiac arrest survivor. Uh, she survived her cardiac arrest actually 11 years ago, so she's one of the more experienced uh, survivors that I've had on the show. Now, as always, to find any of the resources that were mentioned in this uh, conversation, such as, uh, I mean, the nonprofit that Yoko helped to bring life in again, called uh, Bip Pip. Uh, now, this will be maybe more of a resource for people from Belgium listening to check out, as it's in Flemish or in French. It's a nonprofit organization to to provide, well, in short, uh, info for people living with an ICD or a pacemaker. Uh, now, the show notes can be found in the description of this episode or by going directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash podcast and search for Yoga. Please enjoy, you know, this conversation with Yoga. And don't forget to subscribe, to leave a rating if you like uh, this conversation or any of the other ones uh, on whichever podcast app you're using. With that, uh, please again enjoy this conversation with fellow cardiac arrest survivor and heart warrior Joke Gassel. Joke, a warm welcome here to the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. It is thanks really, for having me. It's really yeah nice yeah to welcome you. <laughs> uh, like I said before we start recording, you're the first Belgian guest, you know, for me to have you on the show. So. Uh, you're not even far from where I live, so it's really cool for me no. uh, yeah, to yeah, welcome it's you. It's an honor. Thank you. It's an honor. Well, I mean, I start these uh, conversations with survivors basically in the same way that I will start with you as well. And that's yeah, where it kind of all started, I guess. When and where did you had your cardiac arrest? It was um, almost 11 years ago on the 12th of May in uh, 2013. It was uh, Mother's Day. It was Mother's Day. And it happened uh, on the street in the, 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 the village that we live in. So uh, okay. my story, of course, I had to um, uh, recompose uh, with the testimonies of uh, people standing by, people who saw it happen, because I, I don't remember anything, of course. Eh? But... Uh, I could make a complete story of it. Um, also, thanks to um, somebody who works uh, voluntarily for the ambulance uh, services. And he contacted me only two years, three years ago. So uh, three years ago, I got to complete my the story for myself to know everything what happened that day. Um, mm. So wait, was he was the guy lucky. or the person who, the, who uh, saved the, the, you? Yeah, somebody working for the, the ambulance services. In Belgium, you can also work for those services voluntarily. And he mm -hmm. was on duty that day. And in 2021, um, you probably know on the European Championships of football, uh, the Denmark yep. player Christian Eriksson had yes, his yes. cardiac arrest on the field. So... Um, I got contacted by a friend of mine, a journalist, and he um, wanted to make uh, an item for the national news in Belgium uh, because he knows my story and he knows that I'm trying to promote uh, the, the CPR training uh, for uh, uh, everybody. <laughs> so I got a, a message the day afterwards from a guy um, uh, who, who just asked me, do you have a scar on your left arm? And I said, yes. And then he answered me, uh, I'm, it's my fault. I caused it. Uh, I recognized <laughs> you on the news yesterday. I didn't know you were still alive, everything like wow. that. And he asked me if he could talk about that day because he never forgot about it. And wow. then I got to complete a lot of my story, the, the, the parts that I didn't know uh, from their side, which was very interesting. 
So now I can tell you the whole story, I think, of uh, almost everything. So it was Mother's Day, Mother's Day 2013. Um, I was at home with my daughter, who was at the time two years old, two and a half. Mm. My husband was uh, about 10 kilometers, uh, kilometers from our home working mm. in our new home, which was uh, going to be our new home. So uh, I was home with my daughter and we um, went on the bike to get... Um, some um, a, a drinking bottle and a lunch box I bought for her uh, for, from yeah. Tupperware, you know Tupperware. Uh, yeah, so yeah. we we took the yeah. bike to the Tupperware consulate who was living in our village, and um, I my daughter was in the little seat on in front on the bike. You know these little uh, chairs you have for the little yes. children, and um, so after I think about one mile. Um, I had my cardiac arrest while I was on the bike, I think. So people drive, driving by in their car, saw, they saw us fall down with the bike. And the woman who saw it happen saw that it was not a normal, just a fall on the bike, you know, by, by something you hit or, or you, you... She saw me putting down my two legs on the ground and then just falling uh, sideways, uh, me and my daughter. Wow, with your daughter. In the little seat. Wow. Yeah, with my daughter. Yeah. And uh, so they stopped um, the car. I don't remember anything from that day also before or, or on the bike. It's just by recomposing uh, that I, I know this. Um, they stopped the car and um, the, she knew that the cars behind her were was her family. They were coming back from a, a restaurant nearby celebrating Mother's Day. So there were three cars from the same family. So the first car stopped. It was a, a woman with her boyfriend and she made the next cars then stop. Um, and then it all uh, started, you know, uh, somebody took my daughter out of the little seat and gave her to somebody who was already coming by then the, her father who stopped by the time with the car took off the bike um, and then her mother who had been a nurse before um, started CPR and everything and then it it's the main it was the main road in our village so it's a small village eh, but still on a Sunday there was some passing by so apparently there was a lot of there were a lot of people um, passing by and stopping by. And so um, there was a police agent who stopped the traffic. Uh, the mayor was there. Yeah. Uh, then, the mayor. Um, she, <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Every time All I right. see him now, then I think. Uh, um, but um, the, I, I, I want to say that they, they stopped the traffic and um, the, the medical services were called. And uh, the, the woman who started the CPR had uh, very quickly somebody she could alternate with. So there were two women who, oh, who did wow, the yeah. CPR on me for uh, yeah, a rotation. For, uh, yeah, almost 18, 18 minutes. Um, really? Because they, they called, uh, although we, we were very close to the biggest hospital in Belgium, uh, you know, Gasthuisberg. Uh, you, uh, so still it took uh, nearly 20 minutes for the 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 doctor to get there the ambulance was first and so it's this different services eh? you know you get first you get the ambulance and then you got what and we the call mush. the mush uh, the, yeah, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, yeah with the doctor with the specialist on, or with the board, doctor eh? yeah. The, yeah the first arriving were and was the ambulance and that those are just paramedics uh, but they they have an aed and they they have everything they need so um from this man who contacted me in 2021, I know what was happening at the scene when they arrived. So they saw two women alternating, doing very good uh, CPR on me, but still I was, I was still out. So they they um, then had to shock, of course. And then this guy told me that normally they would shock like two, three times before they end or give up but because of my age I was 37 at the time 
uh, and the, my little girl who was there and they, they knew about her, they, they just didn't want to stop. So they continued and uh, they had uh, to shock seven okay. times to, uh, to, to get a, some sort of a, a rhythm. rhythm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, then uh, I got uh, to hospital uh, still unconscious and then they put me in a, in this uh, induced coma, as you know, <laughs> uh, to um, make your chances mm-hmm. bigger to come out of it uh, without mm. uh, uh, brain damage. So I was cooled and then and in, into this um, induced coma for a couple of days. Um, and the, my, my husband was told by their arrival in the, in the hospital, we arrived together. They drove with the ambulance and my husband arrived at the scene uh, at the same time as the ambulance, uh, more or less. And my daughter was given to him and they got to sit in the front seat in the ambulance because that's a small memory my daughter had in the first years. Um, wow, that she drove what a the ambulance with the the sirens on, and they could, yeah. Mama, I could drive through the red light with the sirens on. <laughs> so it was a happy memory for her. Mm. Uh, I don't <laughs> think she okay. remembers now, but the first year she remembered yeah. that. Um, yeah. So they arrived together at the hospital, and they, my husband always says, uh, "Yeah, they took you to the left and us to the right." And I thought, "Yeah, we lo- we we're gonna lose her. It's not looking good." But then the doctor came to tell me that uh, what they saw at the scene, um, the the way they were doing the CPR, and uh, they also told the, um, the the doctors that they could start the CPR really quickly. Shortly after they saw me fall, they could already start. So there, that my options were quite good if there was not an underlaying thing going on of course yeah, at the time right still had to find out so but yeah. um yeah even during the coma they they gave him some positive messages uh, that it might that there that they, they they could not detect severe damages while i was in the coma i, I don't know what they can check but they try to check some things anyway and they, they, their findings were good at the time yeah? And then, yeah, after a couple of days, they they wake you up again, and then uh, everything seemed uh, seemed uh, okay. So uh, I was very, very, very lucky by uh, yeah, I know the right person at the right time who was passing by. If it happened five minutes before, we were in the in the basement yeah. of an apartment building, just me and my little daughter. So you don't want to think about that. It's just. Uh, it couldn't happen on a better uh, spot than uh, than it did. Uh, yeah. So crazy. These stories are always so crazy to me to hear how someone survived the cardiac arrest because it's yeah. always, like you said, just a matter of of minutes and chance and and depending where they were. It's it always is. so crazy to hear. It wow, is. So your it daughter is. was yeah. two years old, and now I mean, two and a half. So eleven years later, yeah. so she's thirteen now. Yeah, she's thirteen eh, in high school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, doing okay. Um, yeah, it was uh, the, the next day, the 13th of May, uh, was her first day of school. So that's why we were going to get this uh, uh, lunch box and uh, drinking <laughs> yes, yes, bottle. Yes. Uh, right. But I, I, I don't know anything about her first two weeks in school. She went to school mm. while I was in, uh, in this uh, induced coma and then the two weeks I was in hospital. And then she... she n- never really knew what happened of course in the beginning she was really small she was yes mommy you have to put on a helmet eh, the next time we drive a bike (laughs) because you know 11 years ago it was not so common yet as an adult to put on a helmet Uh, now I do of course uh, but uh, at the time I had no helmet on she didn't either uh, because Mm -hmm. yeah you think I drive this bike you know through our little village for one two kilometers on a uh, yeah, yeah. You don't so expect the cardiac arrest before, no. So no, voila. But um, yeah. so that was uh, her first uh, thing. Uh, next time you have to put on uh, a helmet. And then, um, um, what was I going to say? Can't remember. Ah, uh, yeah, about her. Yeah, her memory about it. Um, she, so she didn't really know about it uh, uh, until then. 
this um, accident in um, in 2021 with the, the the football player she was she was watching uh, oh yeah the match with my husband i think or the news i don't know i came home later that night and uh, my husband just casually said okay i it happened she saw it happening on tv and i said oh that what's that's what mommy had and i said you just told her like this that's what mommy had how did she react? Oh, oh, nothing special. I thought yeah, I have to talk about this now. And then yeah. I think by now it is, it's, she's starting to, to, to learn more about it, about what happened and also about yeah. what, what she escaped and we escaped as a family. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And in those 11 years, do they know? why you had a cardiac arrest do you have some underlying heart disease or something that they figured out well that is a part of a bigger story uh, i should probably also tell um i had been to a cardiologist for the first time in my life uh, three weeks before this happened the reason was in our family um uh, very sad um, a few weeks before now 11 years ago in, in end of March my sister's uh, daughter was sick um, they thought she had the flu it was a normal kid of almost five years old never been sick and she had to throw up and she was weak it was March the doctor thought she has the flu, eh? keep her at home for a day. And um, after two days, she could not eat and still uh, getting weak. And so the doctor said, you take her to the hospital to get an IV, you know, with some fluids and uh, some. Um, so they went to the hospital. They checked her belly and everything. Oh, that's OK. There's nothing going on in the belly. We're going to put her on an IV for some, uh, you know, water and fluids. Uh, it was on a Thursday evening and Friday morning she was critical. And then they realized that there was nothing going on with her belly, but her heart was expanded so much. So she had, uh, she was, it was expanded so much that it could not pump uh, wow. uh, good anymore. So yeah. she had organ failure. And, you know, it, it was wow. really critical. Then she had to be brought to a, the bigger hospital where they had a, a children's cardiologist and everything. And then it came out. For, at first they thought a virus had, uh, that she had, had a flu and that the virus got onto her heart and that was causing uh, this. But then they had to, it was, she was so critical, they had to um, get her to the pump, the, the, the external heart pump. So they had to uh, really? yeah, do an operation to, to get, because otherwise, it was not pumping good anymore, so they had to put her on this machine. And during this operation, they saw the damage on her heart, the, the fact that it was dilated so much. They said, this is not caused by a virus. She has uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, yeah, yeah. And then when we heard mm. that word, not me, but my mother's brothers, when they heard that, they say, they said, I have that. I have dilated cardiomyopathy. My uncle, eh? oh. being 70 at the time, or 65. Yeah. And so uh, the ball got rolling, rolling, uh, how do you say it in English? Uh, it started yeah, yeah. that they wanted to check everyone in the family. Yeah. Because my mother did never have any symptoms of this cardiomyopathy. So we never got checked because she didn't have symptoms so they they assumed that she did not have it uh, the gene or anything else uh, that she so we were never checked uh, uh, um but this news that it was the same um thing that this little girl had it was the same as my uncle and his brother who died already um my other by uncle, the way is she still alive it started no so this is the yeah. next in the story. Um, so mm -hmm. we were all asked to the hospital for uh, checkups to see if we had mm. uh, something going on with our heart. 
looking for this cardiomyopathy, eh? DCM, as mm. they call it, dilated cardiomyopathy. She was on this pump by that time and put on the waiting list for a heart transplantation. Eh? Um, and the, so this was very emotional, all going on in March, April, beginning of May. Being on this pump, this heart pump, it's is dangerous. Eh? They have you have a lot of risk for uh, thrombosis. Eh? For uh, so they give you thinners for the blood, but they cannot give you too much because then you have ris risks for ble internal bleedings. And so it's a it's a very difficult um, balance. Uh, looking for a balance, and I had a very difficult time with the emotions. So um, the, the the grief in my sister, uh, the grief with my for my parents. And the day before my cardiac... So I, I went to the hospital and I was fine. They could not find anything. They, they, they said, oh, you have a repolar repolarization disorder, which is not dangerous, not nothing to worry about. If we see you once every three, four years, it's okay. So they so, did find something. Yes, but they, they said that it was, you, you know, yeah. you can find something in everybody. It was something they did not find uh, worth okay. looking into. Uh, um, so I just uh, just went home and uh, and then, but it was so, so heavy. And the day before I had my cardiac arrest, we were at my parents' house, as we did every week on Saturday. And my sister came in, in between the visiting hours of the intensive care that their, uh, her daughter was on at the time. And I can't remember all of it, but my father told me that uh, I went uh, to him in the kitchen and I told him, literally, I can't take it anymore. I, I can't, something has to happen. There has to be a heart for her or she has to die or something. But this, this waiting, this not knowing What is going to happen? When is it going to happen? I, I, I could not deal with that anymore. So I am convinced that my cardiac arrest is caused by emotional stress. Or maybe not caused by emotional stress, but induced. Eh? So some, something that must be some uh, disorder that I must have got triggered by this emotion. Yeah, yeah, like a vulnerability yeah, that got triggered. Yeah. So there was this emotion, but then also eh, we, we lived in an apartment and we bought the house we are living in now. And the apartment, yeah. we had uh, difficulties getting it sold. So that there, there was also a bit of stress. Then we were in the middle of a second um, or third uh, round of uh, IVF. Yeah, so my first, my daughter was born after uh, IVF. And we were going through, a, a, I think, the third or fourth cycle for a, a second child. And um, in April that year also, um, one of the, the procedures could not go through uh, the pickup of the eggs, um, for those who know what I'm talking about, because they made a mistake in hospital. I thought, it's, a, it's a big story, but I went through a, a, a whole treatment with no result because of a, a fault in the hospital also that year in April. But at that time, my little niece was in the same hospital in her situation. So I just, I thought, okay, that's nothing bad. We continue afterwards. There are worse things going on at the time, at this time. So um, I, it, it's all in, in all of this together. I think this was, must have been an, an enormous emotional stress for me. I can't handle emotional stress very well, so I, I I'm convinced this must have triggered something, uh, something. in my yeah. heart. Yeah, and then of, yeah, for to talk about my niece, uh, she, um, oh, you can't, you cannot uh, dream this or or uh, imagine this before, but I had my cardiac arrest on Sunday, so mm -hmm. I was in the hospital Sunday evening in this induced coma. And in the night from Sunday to Monday, there was a little heart. There was a heart for my niece. So okay. I don't know what my family mm. went through. I am. Uh, I sometimes say I'm very happy that I was not there to 
yeah. to witness what all happened for them, you know, having me there and then the, the, all the stress with, for, uh, with the, the, the heart that is found and then a very heavy operation and how is it all going to go? And then, and, and then when I woke up, uh, after a couple of days, my first questions were, uh, every day the same. How is, uh, how is she doing? How is she doing? And then, and, and it, it made also my, in my feelings about what happened to me and, and, and it, it, yeah, it has a big, big impact on that also, because, you know, there's always the other side of my story, which is the story of my little niece. She lived for a mm -hmm. couple of weeks after the transplantation, but, um, you know, oh, wait, so she had the transplantation. The night I was in, uh, yeah, she had the transplantation the night okay. after I got came in hospital. Yeah. And then she, um, she lived for a couple of weeks, but she already had, yeah. when she was on the pump, a couple of um, strokes and then she was paralyzed. She was deaf. She was blind. So it was oh very, God. very, um, very hard. And, and, and uh, she, she died. She, you know, she was in a university hospital, so they tried everything. Yeah. Which after, you know, now when you think about it, maybe they should not have done all of this anymore. But she died the mm. 1st of uh, of June. Yeah. So that that change That's... changes my story a lot because, you know, there's always this very, this other thing mm. which is so much worse, you know. That makes me sure uh, relativize my uh, my my story and and, and 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 my grief and my my grief mm. is much more for my niece and my uh, my sister and uh, than yeah. it's for me. I was just so lucky, you know. I, nothing bad happened to me. I just was very 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 lucky. That's how I see it. Yeah. Well, I always, I mean. Really terrible things happen to people who just don't deserve it. No. And mm -hmm. I'm really sorry to hear this about your niece. That's just mm -hmm. horrible okay. what happened to her. Yes, yes, it is, it is, it is. Yeah. But then, so we, we all, oh. be, because I had this uh, cardiac arrest, then the doctors, oh, they were at my bed, at the end, at my, at the feet end of the bed. Oh, we didn't expect this to, to happen. No, you, you clearly did not. Uh, yeah. Uh, but um, then everybody of the family had to come back to the hospital to get new tests because they had also oh. they, they had to do more severe tests on the rhythm. We went from a family who was always very healthy and and and, and all eh, all kinds of sports and and no big problems. In one year, we went to a family mm. of of cardiac patients. You know, it was uh, very very bizarre, and then. And then the doctor yes. said, "You you should be, you should be glad that you know now that you have to look for these things. Uh, also in the children, you know you can test them. You know, because other people who have no problems, there are also many of them who have problems and don't know about it. Eh? And they did a lot of research afterwards, and they they did genetic um, research because they were and they are convinced that there is a." A relation between the the DCM, the dilated cardiomyopathy, and my cardiac arrest and my brother's uh, um, heart problems, but they did not find it yet. So they they repeat it every few years. They start up a new genetic um, research. Oh, yeah. and they still have some blood from my niece. They have blood from my, yeah. my uncle, for me, for my brother, and uh, it went all the way, as we say, to America. <laughs> uh, the USA also they never found anything uh, yet uh, yeah. but they are still convinced that there is a relation but uh, I don't have any symptoms of uh, the cardi uh, the dilated cardiomyopathy uh, my mom is starting to have the um, symptoms of car of the dilated cardiomyopathy but she has no electrical uh, problems no rhythm mm. no arrhythmia or anything mm. so um it's still, uh, yeah. Yeah. Question mark. And how are you actually, I mean, just today after 11 years, how have those years in a way been for you? Like, do you feel today quite well, fine or normal or yes, how do you feel? I live yeah. a normal life. I have no mm -hmm. restrictions whatsoever. 
Yeah. But I, I, I listened to a few of the podcasts before, which made me think about it again. And I, yeah. probably if you would have asked me this 10 years ago or eight uh -huh. years ago, I, I would feel differently. Yeah? Probably. I think the time has already uh, done its work. And uh, um, mm -hmm. since there were no new events for me or no big events, um, um, I don't think about this every day. I, I, yes. I do everything that I want to do. Of course, there is always, I, I don't ride a, a normal bike uphill. Eh? I use my electric bike. Eh? I, I keep my sure. heart rhythm under 150. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. in the, in, in, when I do cardio fitness or something, I keep it under the 150. But all the rest, I don't think I do some Thing different than I would have done. Of course, you never know, but uh, I, I live a normal life. I, um, but in the beginning, of course, I was at home for six months, so I stopped. Uh, I, I could not go to work because they said I needed also the rest to recover. I followed a rehabilitation program also in the you know of, um, revalidation, uh, uh, physical training in the hospital. And uh, I was at home for six months and then I st uh, started to work again, but um, part time, part time. And um, the, the doctor literally, the cardiologist literally said, when I asked him, can I work more or should I work less? He always says, it's up to you. So there is no physical yeah. I have no physical limitations. Yeah. I think it is more maybe mentally. For me, I always say the one thing I can do to maybe prevent or help prevent happening this again is keeping my stress under control, trying to keep my stress level as low as possible. Of course, emotional stress is something you cannot really uh, influence I think you try but it but I try not to have stress from work or from things that I can change myself yeah eh? so that is the only change that I made so I I, I of course I changed my work uh, um, I I am a dentist and I had my own uh, dental uh, <sighs> Cabinet, uh, how do you say it in, in English? Uh, I looked it up in uh, uh, dental cabinet. Practice? Yeah, the, yeah, dental cabinet. Yeah, practice. Yeah, uh, I was a general yeah. uh -huh. dentist working on my own. I had just one assistant. Ah, yeah. um, hmm. So when this happened, um, at the time there was another dentist in the neighborhood who was doing changes on his house and he rented my cabinet or a little place in my cabinet to do some of his patients at the time that I had my cardiac arrest. So ha this happening to me, he helped out my patients who were on the agenda. Mm. And so he worked a bit in my cabinet. But then after six months, I returned part time. And I also mm. didn't want to do everything of anymore of the job. I didn't want to be a general dentist anymore. I wanted to reduce stress. So I decided yeah. for myself that I was going to um, focus on prevention. You know the the general um, uh, checkups, uh, detartration. Uh, yes, yes. A lot yeah, of yeah. explaining to do to the patients, and um, yeah. so I could not keep my own uh, dental cabinet because you need to be general if you want to be on your own. So I decided mm. to stop. Um, so I quit uh, the the my own cabinet um, and then I started working part-time for other dentists so in in group practices where I only do prevention and, and also some uh, a bit of um, um, what you know dental prosthesis uh, you know removable dentures as we call them in English um, I do that uh, a lot but so yeah I had my own cabinet um, I think for only um six six years so after 2013 i have been working to pay off uh, something that was not there anymore so uh, but yeah you know you relativize uh, the things after that uh, 
financial issues were not really the most important things on my mind anymore. So, uh, um, all right. Yeah, so you're a dentist. So now I work. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Arschot. I work four days. No, 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 no not in Arschot. In Tremelo. Yeah. yeah. Tremelo. Bau, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And in Dist. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, so in all multiple. Close, uh, Yes, in a, yeah. yes, I work in a in a facility for uh, elderly people. Um, uh, I work there uh, one day in a week, a couple of hours. You know, to there's no one else but me who goes there. Mm. So all that I can do is is, is a plus for them. And then mm. I work two days, full days in uh, in Baal and yeah. one day in uh, Dist. But yeah. it's all very flexible. So the weeks that my husband is away from home because he works works away from home, um, then I work a little less and the other weeks I work more. So it's very flexible, which gives me a lot of rest in my head. If I say now I don't want to work next month, that and that day, that's no problem. I can just uh, empty the agenda and that's no problem. Uh, so uh, for that, uh, for work matters is very... Um, you know, I, I do this because I like it. Yeah, yeah. So no stress there. Hey, sorry to interrupt the uh, conversation between me and Joke. Uh, this will just take a short moment. If you are interested in supporting this project and if you and well, if you think this pullover and this mug look really cool, uh, we also have a T-shirt. Uh, then check out the show notes where I will place a link to our. Uh, well, shop for our merch. Um, you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash get involved. And, uh, well, this mug is with the logo of the Heart Warrior Project on. Uh, there's also a great quote on the back. Uh, but we also have a design explicitly made for cardiac arrest survivors with I'm a Heart Warrior on. Now, we have that also for the pullover and for the t-shirt. And I am working with more artists on really really cool designs and i'm really excited about to to launch soon on uh on the shop check out the show notes to find the link or go again directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash get involved to check out already the merch that we have or to see if any of the new designs is already out uh, now if you're not interested in any of the merch but you do want to support the project we do offer donations as well which can again be found in the link located in the show notes or going directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash get involved okay let's go back now to the conversation let me throw um another question at you after 11 years now is there something that you wished your cardiologist has told you sooner or, or something that you discovered that you wished in a way that you discovered sooner that you could share to any cardiac arrest survivor uh, listening? Well, I noticed you asked this question to uh, others before. So I, I, mm -hmm. I thought about it and um, yeah. I think that um, there is not much a cardiologist can tell you just in the weeks, months, years after your arrest, because uh, everyone experiences it differently. You know, uh, for some people, there are physical um, restrictions afterwards. Uh, for others, they're not. Uh, the, the mental issues are different for everybody uh, so i think a, a cardiologist at itself can only he can only inform you about uh, diseases you have or uh, malfunctions of your heart that you have and, and 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 things you did probably not know before or maybe you did and it changed so he can tell you all of this uh, these things but for all the things next to that, living with the the experience you had, living with maybe the limitations you have, I think it's more um, for mental um, um, help, helpers, you know, you say, psychologists, uh, psychiatrists, if necessary. Uh, also, anyone's uh, everyone's um, network is differently. Eh? Do you have somebody at home living with you? Do you have a good uh, working uh, uh, working spot? Uh, oh, oh, 
everything is different for everybody. So I don't think there is one particular thing uh, they, they can tell you or, or, or help you with mm. in the beginning. I, I, I think the, the rehabilitation program I followed was really helpful, but I think that I, I've had to ask for it. I don't think it was, uh, um, I got it automatically. I think it was only preserved for people who had a heart attack, open heart surgery, you know, oh, because problems with their I, heart pump. Ah, because I did receive it automatically. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Even though I didn't went to it. <laughs> <laughs> but I received yeah. it automatically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, maybe yeah, it I, depends on the, I, I your think condition that... and what you have. Well, I think so. And, and, and they were actually, uh, maybe I was the first one to ask at the time and did they, they changed it maybe mm. afterwards. Right. Uh, I yes, remember that I, I had three times a week, there was this physical, uh, rehabilitation and there were, the, those were physic, um, physiotherapists who, who, um, uh, who gave that. And I, they, they, they gave me a halter every time and I was the only one. There were maybe 15 other people. And I was the only one with a halter and with this, uh, who had only electrical issues, you know. Um, all the rest had, had issues with their pumping volume or the, the, uh, had, had a heart attack, uh, and had to, they, they had to strengthen it. I was at the, the top of my game, you know, I was in a very good shape before. Um, so after two, three weeks, you know, I, I, I was doing, yeah, it was like a fitness training I did there. But the fact that it was guided, that there were people there, that I had my halter, that uh, it was emotional at times, and there was always always somebody there to to, mm. to help you. There was also mm. a social assistant uh, that you could go to every week. There was a psychologist you could go to. It was a whole program. It was covered by the health insurance. Uh, uh, so it, it, I think it was... a. Uh, it helped me a lot, you know, to, to do things, physical things again, that you were at the first years. The thing I struggled the most with was anxiety. Eh? This is going to happen again. When is it going to happen again? Will I be at home alone with my daughter? Will I be in the car with my daughter? You know, when is this going to happen? You know, this anxi anxiety gets gets a hold of you and then you, you get a panic attack. And then and I've been through all of that, you know. And this being able to do sports in a, um, you know, a begeleid, um, uh, you know, guided, <laughs> Under -guided. Uh, somebody, yeah, people, yeah. people yeah. Uh, who know about your situations are there. It made you get uh, confidence in your, in my body again. Eh? To, 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 sure, it's to a safe space I that they create, right? Yes, it's a safe space. And then... Uh, you get more confident again. I think I struggled the first years uh, with anxiety, uh, which helped me maybe back uh, a bit. Uh, but now I'm doing really, I'm do doing really okay. I, I think I've had two rhythm uh, things they noticed through my ICD in these 11 years. Um, you know, a run of, uh, of, uh, uh, heartbeat uh, and going faster, but it, it 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 recovered itself, and it was always also at the time that there was some emotional stress. So I'm really convinced that it is. Uh, if I can uh, get that, keep that a bit under control, yeah. Then and I, I take of course the beta blockers, uh, and then uh, which ah, makes yeah, so me. Yeah, so you do take medication. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's the only thing, beta blocker. Um, yeah. And uh, th it's also a bit of a, an in, uh, it, it makes me think that I do everything that I can. So I, um, how do you have, to, it makes me uh, at ease if I've taken my medication. It's also a, some sort of a mental thing, eh? I think. It also yes. it works, of yes. course, eh? a beta blocker is not nothing. Uh, and, and maybe I am a bit more, uh, tired and, and not so active uh, as I was, probably. Uh, but um, for me, it's it's my new normal. So it's uh, I don't see it as an issue or a problem or something. Uh, 
My brother, for instance, doesn't want to take them because, you know, he's an athlete. He does not want to feel restricted in his, uh, in his, in his uh, energy. Eh? You, you probably mm -hmm. have the same uh, feeling or issues about uh, beta blockers. Uh, a lot of people do. I actually yeah. don't take a beta blocker. Mm -hmm. I take, um, it's called kinedine. Do you know it's, 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 I don't know. It's a very old medication. They don't give it anymore to people. It's just right now the only thing that seems to work a little bit, but it also has like a black label. So actually taking it increases my risks of dying. So, yeah. Yeah. But it's temporarily, I think. So, I, yeah. Must be difficult. Yeah. Hmm. Well, no young person wants to take medication, right? I mean, at your age, at my age, we don't want to take medication. Um, well, yeah, it's it's how it is. You have to be happy with the things that you still can do. Yeah. Exactly, right? And that's, I guess, I mean, I, I guess what you do. It's definitely what I try as well, to focus only on what I can do and not so much on what I can't. Mm. And, uh, yeah, makes me a bit more happier. <laughs> so Yeah. And you're helping other people with your... Uh with your uh, podcast and mm. with your project to, to get awareness. And, and I think that gives yeah. us some sort of a fulfillment as well. So, uh, Oh yeah. yeah. I'm very much around meaning. I, I try to live a life kind of filled with meaning or that's what makes me really happy. And so doing this project really, well, every time that I struggle with something, I try to turn it around into something more empowering, not alone for myself, but also to hopefully have effect on the world, Helpful. like with this project. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I also saw that you had a, um, well, it's a non-profit, I guess, that you restarted? Yes. In Belgium, uh, right? It, yeah, it's a non-profit organization that started in 2008 by a person who got an ICD, and it is... Uh, you, what we call a patient organization um, for carriers of an ICD. And we, with Corona, the, 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 the COVID uh, period, it all went um, downhill. You know, the, the people could not come together anymore. And uh, the people who started this nonprofit got older. Some of them died, others got sick. Um, and so it was uh, on a low, uh, very low. And then the cardiologists were the cardiologists were uh, really um, looking for us to to um, to grow again because they feel a lot of their patients come to them with questions they don't have time for yeah? so people wanting to know can i go on a holiday with can i take a plane can i can i use my induction uh, fire in the kitchen yeah, yeah. can i drive an electric car you know the cardiologists want to answer that question maybe once but not 10 times every week so they, they wish that we would sure. be there for people to be able to ask those questions uh, to us. Mm. So um, somebody uh, was looking for uh, people to work with them, and I, I, I agreed immediately. So we tried to uh, um, get this back on track, and uh, we succeeded. So, uh, yeah, and now new members are getting uh, coming by. We... we expanded the organization also for people with a pacemaker just because you know belgium is small and uh, yes they, yeah. they, the problems it's more or less the same uh, device uh, the, the 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 problems or the questions are the same for a pacemaker or an icd of uh, not all all of it but uh, in general yeah. so uh, we expanded now for uh, patients with icd and pacemaker and and I, I just like it, you know, people asking a question or maybe I call, somebody called us telling, um, I just heard that I have this uh, disorder with my heart and uh, I'm 27 and I, I mm. feel like my life is ending and we wanted to start a family and then and, now and is this the end for me? I'm going to get an ICD and then I'm very happy that I can talk to to this person and and and, and give ex the experiences we had and and and, and um, guide guide them on, on on their way to information and and to to reassurance and uh, to and that makes me just uh, just happy uh, to to be able to to. And you're a beautiful example. 
you're a beautiful example, right? You have had 11 years of experience. You live a normal life, like you said. So it is possible. And that's, yeah, for people who are kind of new into the game, really beautiful and good yeah. to hear. And also because I'm being a dentist, I had some sort of a medical uh, um, yep. education. Yep. I'm interested in, in science and, and, and I understand uh, maybe some... Uh, medical articles, maybe something that a, bit, a little bit better. And I have connections in, in, in For uh, sure. more medical and in, in uh, scientific uh, uh, you know, uh, groups. So uh, I, yeah, I just, I, I like it uh, to put my, my uh, experience and, and knowledge to, uh, to, to get it to other people who need it. So uh, I like that. Yeah. It gives me a lot of uh, energy. Yeah. So the organization is called BIPIB, right? Yeah, BIPIP, yes, and that's it. BIPIP, yes, yes. Uh, and for yeah. people listening, you know, who are located in Belgium, uh, I will place it in the show notes to find it, uh, the website. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm really glad that you, together with other people, restarted this, because, I mean, we need education around these topics. So, yeah, much more, right? So that's yeah. really good. Yeah, so there's a website where people can already find some frequently asked questions. We we post some articles. We we go to uh, cardiologists' congresses and then may, make make uh, uh, small uh, papers out of it to with information which uh, could could be interesting for us for them. So um, yes. we have some good ideas for the future, and we hope we can grow a bit because it all has yeah. to be. Uh, paid for of course so it's not uh, uh not uh, so easy to get this uh on track again but we're on the on the good way on the good way so it's going okay yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. well i'm really excited to see only things like this coming up so uh i'll definitely be following yeah thank you thank you um so actually on the question that i asked so you know around that anything you wish your cardiologists would have told you sooner is there maybe something in general that you wished you would have discovered sooner around cardiac arrest or living with an ICD? Not really. A, no, I don't really have a wish that I, I, I would have known or would have seen. I can only say to, to people, you know, in the first time after the event and uh, then of, then it's very normal to feel what you feel. The anxiety, the fear, the, the, the sadness, the, the grief. It's all normal and take your time for it. Let it let let those feelings be there and then and, and talk to people about them. Don't don't shut it in yourself. And you have to have trust at that time that it is going to get better. It'll take time, yeah. but it is going to get better. You're going to get used to the the new normal to the new you to the on every level physical mentally also the people around you they're going to get used to your new you if you allow them to 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 know what this has changed or, or to know what you're struggling with if you don't talk about it or you don't mention them why you are feeling this or why you're feeling that they don't know about it you know they, they if they know about it they'll get yeah. used to it and and then i think trust eh, ha, trust in yourself trust in your in the future that it, it will get better and and let the feelings that are there let them be there and look for help if you need it uh, look for uh, there are now in this uh, time with all the internet things you can find groups you can find f- people you can find to talk with but also uh, medical uh, psychological psychological help medical help don't stay at home alone with your problems without telling anyone or or, or looking for help and really have have trust in yourself in the future and uh, yeah. yeah it'll get better it'll get better yeah i mean as someone like me who has been now here three years after my cardiac arrest it's really good to hear this from someone who has had now 11 years of experience um 
so yeah, thank you for sharing that because I think for me that's also good to to hear. Still, uh, I guess this is a process, right? Uh, yes, it's a going process. through a cardiac arrest. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think also in the beginning years I was more thinking about it like you. This this happened to me. This happened to me, and I have to continue now after this happened to me. But now, when I think mm. about it now, I think. And I, when you, you know, you see a lot of things going on around you, uh, things that are in my eyes so much worse. People have could to go yeah. through things that are so much worse with, with other um, consequences. And I think I'm just, I just was very lucky. I just was terribly lucky. I survived this, and 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 I'm 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 just now very lucky. Not I'm not someone who has had a cardiac arrest. No, I'm a very lucky person person that I'm still alive. So I am, yes, yeah, yes. I, I cannot explain it maybe in the right words. I, I don't know if it comes over as I, I mean it, but it, in, in my eyes, there's a difference also because I am, I, I, um, um, I don't have any physical restrictions after it or limitations. It makes, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm talking for myself, of course, uh, with, with the situation sure, sure. as it yeah. is. Um, it's not like I've had an amputation of a leg or I did not have uh, breast cancer with all the changes after that. Uh, those are people who have to continue in a completely different way and, 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 and find new, new ways f for doing things. In my eyes, I'm the same person as before. I'm going on as I was before with a few minor restrictions, maybe. I was just very lucky. And I see it that way. I, I try to relativize what has happened by, by seeing what other people have to go through and how lucky I am. I'm still here and I'm living the way that I am. That's just... Uh, but as I say, it's personal. I, I, I respect... <laughs> Everyone yeah, it's who, very personal. For who yeah. it's 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 a very it's a I, I noticed it in the in your podcast already. For some people, it is, is much more much a little different as as I experience it. But a lot more changes I, happened I in their life. I just want to be honest with what I with I feel. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. So that's why it's mm -hmm. good to hear different stories from survivors, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone's yeah. experience yeah. will be slightly different. Um. So yeah, it's a different journey, right? Uh, so for people listening, yeah, uh, it's a different journey. Um, but I, yeah, thank you for sharing some parts of your journey, you know, here. Mm -hmm. uh, I could ask more questions, but I think we're about an hour now into the conversation. Um, let me just maybe ask, is there some, some last thing, you know, that you still wanted to share here to any survivor listening or to me or just in general allow allow the feelings that you have allow the the in the first time years after the event allow them uh, seek help if you if you need it there is help uh, available there is help yes yeah. and have trust have trust in the process that time heals a lot eh? i will not say it heals everything but it heals a lot and it just as missing somebody eh, and grief, it does not go away, but it gets a place. It gets a good place That's in true. your life. And try to find it a good spot, you know. Allow it to be there, but try to give it a, its its place that it, uh, and, and, and try not to let it and keep it over the years um, um yeah, I'll, yeah. I can't find the, the word. Don't let it. Um, no, no, it's. I, I, yeah. Bepaal je leven. Bepaal heel je leven in het Nederlands. Uh, laat het. Uh, oh, laat don't let it determine. Laat je hele leven bepalen. Yeah, yeah don't, don't let, let it determine, determine your, your whole life. Eh? Give it yes. a spot and allow yes. it to uh, put it in the spotlights now and then, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but trust that time. But move will, forward. Will, will help you move forward. Yeah, continue yes. and, and, and in a new way, in a different way, and and, and yeah. Maybe some people, yeah, as it goes uh, in life, some people will not like the way you see your new life or do things differently. Um, 
but others will and you will meet new people yeah. and you will life continues and uh, yeah trust the process yeah yes that's beautifully said all yeah Joke, thank you really uh, again for you know being here on the show for sharing your story and uh, yeah for everything that you shared here in this conversation I thank you and I, I want to wish you a lot of success also with your project uh, I drink coffee <laughs> out of this mug yes, every cheers. day <laughs> <laughs> and also awesome. i have a jumper yeah. but it's in the closet upstairs yeah. but uh, i wish you a lot of luck and if i i can uh, be of any help or uh, or maybe i will ask yeah. you uh, uh one day to 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 maybe write something or give a testimony for our uh, sure. organization uh, you know uh, anything i'll find yes. you <laughs> i only yeah 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 <laughs> you know where to find me yeah you even yes. know where i live so you can get me even if yeah. you want yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes but please i mean I only would love to help in any way that I could. Uh, mm. So, mm. yeah, you can always contact. It's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. And that concludes this conversation between me and Joke. I, yeah, I hope that you gained something from this conversation, that it might have helped you or might come to help you in some sense along this journey of yours. To find any of the resources mentioned in the conversation, do check out the show notes, which are located in the description or go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash podcast and search for yoga. With that, um, yeah, thank you for being here, for joining me, and I hope I get to welcome you again soon on another episode here on the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, to leave a rating on whichever podcast app you're using as leaving a rating does truly help me out a lot does truly help this project out a lot for it to grow uh you know and with that more people more other cardiac arrest survivors can find this podcast and these conversations that hopefully may help them having said that see you on another episode this is Elis Vaz signing off oh one more thing if you're interested and you don't know about the merch that we have we got some really cool merch, like this mug that I'm holding here with the logo of the Heart Warrior Project on, the shirt that I'm wearing with also the logo of the Heart Warrior Project on. Uh, now, we have this mug, uh, which also have a beautiful quote on it, uh, also explicitly made for uh, cardiac arrest survivors with I'm a Heart Warrior design on. Uh, we also have that for the pullover or for the t-shirt. And we are also, I am working with other artists to create more cool logos, or not logos, more cool designs for the pullovers, the muck and the t-shirt. So yeah, if any, yeah, if you want to support these projects or you just really want some cool merch, yes, I think it's really cool merch, then check out the merch. Uh, in the description, I will place a link that will take you to the page where you can find the merch. Uh, or you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash get involved. Now, if you're not so much interested in any of our merch, we also do offer a donation or donations. Uh, and that you can also find in the description or by going again to the same uh, link. Uh, heartwarriorproject.com slash get involved. Thank you for, you know, considering or for making a purchase or for a donation. It does truly help me to continue doing this. So thank you. All right. That's it.